thought we'd start out here with uh, one, uh, boy, I don't know how old this is, a really old fly uh, that I started a long, long time ago uh, with a little bit of help from my mom, actually, when she came out to visit one year. Uh, it's called a Yukon Caddis. It's, a, it's an emerger. can be done in a variety of colors. We're going to kind of do a green version or a olive, dark olive version of it today. Um, but it started out, like I said, a long time ago. Um, uh, my mom came out to visit and she sews quite a bit and this would have been in the early 90s. I took her over to the sewing shop and while she was looking for her materials, whatever, I was kind of dilly-dallying around and found, which are pretty common now, but back in that time it wasn't, these little glass seed beads. And uh, happened to look at this one type, which is called diamond, uh, and looked at it and said, like, oh my god, that looks just like a little air bubble underneath the water, that, the way that it glistens. So I messed around with all different kinds of patterns and uh, different techniques, and anyway, ended up, ended up with this fly here, and it's called the Yukon Caddis Emerger. Um, it's on a black hook, happens to be uh, a 900 BL Tiemco uh, and these little seed beads this happens to be an 11 aught anyway and it's called diamond um, commercially now you'll find them you know in the fly tying stuff this is a size 16 and so we're looking at a, an 11 bead 11 aught and this is a thread I use quite often uh, with, with a lot, a lot of patterns is just kind of this tan thread, which I think you'll find you can tie an awful lot of uh, flies with it, and it, it's kind of chameleon. Whatever you tie, it kind of takes on that color that you tie with it. So I kind of put that bead in place of where it's going to be on the, on the fly, about two-thirds of the way up, up the front of it. And this whole pattern really is uh, basically a takeoff of Gary LaFontaine's sparkle emerger. But the great thing about this is you can really fish it right on top of the surface. It'll sit right into the surface film and you can fish it quite easily as a dry fly. And I just go down pretty close to the tail set position. Right in there. And now a little Zelon for a, for a shuck. Uh, and most of everything I use for pretty much all my shucks will be um, this amber colored. Like your sparkle duns and stuff will have, you'll see they'll be all different color zelon. But I mean, if you really take an insect and look at that exoskeleton that it finally pushes away, uh, it, it's pretty amber and translucently amber. And so I'd pretty much use this this color version again pretty much for all of my mergers. If I'm trying to get that, you know, that trailing shuck. Another thing that I do pretty much on on all, especially my smaller flies, I really think of economy of moves of where I'm not piling a lot of thread here, there, back, forth. Um, so, you know, as you saw there, I just went back, laid a thread base, which I like to do on all my hooks, come back up, now I'm gonna take this back. So every, every move actually really, really counts. This is a combination of uh, different Zelon. Here we've got some light olive, some dark olive, a little brown, and I've mixed them all together. It doesn't have one solid color. Does it really make a difference? Probably more to me than any, anything else. But again, if you are trying to, to mix this uh, Zelon, it will tangle on you quite easily. But if you'll take uh, the loop part of uh, Velcro and you can stroke it, it'll all come together. There's a bunch of uh, companies that make either 
xelon or uh, a material that is very, very similar to it. It's a trilobial uh, fiber, actually come from the carpet industry. And what it means, you know, by, by saying trilobial, what it means is if we took that fiber and put it under a microscope or whatever, there's three facet sides, so it's not round. It's, you know, it will have like three sides. So it reflects light very, very well. This is going to be the kind of the over, over body, over abdomen. It's going to kind of create a, a uh, kind of a humpy effect. The same way La, La Fontaine did with his uh, uh, Kettis sparkle emerger. Except for we're not going to do the whole, the whole fly or the whole hook is the way he did. Um, one thing I did do there when I got to the back, I put one wrap behind that tail. I went back underneath and put it, which supports that tail so it doesn't droop. And this is just a rabbit dubbing that I'm going to do relatively kind of spiky, kind of not real, not necessarily real, real tight. But another thing you'll notice on when we do mayflies, we have a pretty astute taper from the back to the front. If you really look at caddis, they're built just the opposite. They're, they have a pretty, either pretty straight all the way across that abdomen, or else actually at the back, it's actually a little heavier than at the front. So I'm, I kind of have, as you're going to see here, a little bit of a reverse taper. So it's a little heavier towards the back a little lighter towards the front. And again, you could do this a little bit different than this by just taking the thread and going over the top of this bead and continuing on to the front. I tend to whip finish it here. Stop my thread. And now I'm going to start it again in front. Um, I just feel it makes for a much more durable fly. Um, I could have gone right over the top of that, just as I mentioned, gone right over the top of the bead with that. Problem is, if, you know, like fish, a tooth or whatever, if that thread broke, the integrity of that whole fly uh, would have been compromised. It would be pretty easy for it to come flying apart there. So I finished it behind the bead, started the thread again in front, put two soft wraps right there. Now take a bodkin. And you could do this various ways. This is just the, just the way that I do it. I come back in with that soft wrap and pull that overbody Zelon back. But as you can kind of see, and this I think is a is a real, real key to this fly. Once I pull that back, then I'm gonna pull it down. And where La Fontaine encircled that whole hook right there. I'm just going to pull it down so it comes right parallel with that hook shank. And what that's going to create is, is a, a pontoon effect. So when that fly comes down, when it lands on the water, it, it sits, poop, right down. So it, uh, 
it will float very, very well. And when you get done, when we get done with this and you can look underneath, it actually will look from the back, it'll go into kind of a heart shape like that. And if you've got it like that, you'll see how well it'll fish. And now once that's there, I kind of hold that relatively pretty, pretty strong with my left hand and put some pretty tough wraps in right there. The other great thing about this fly is that it's a fly that just keeps fishing. You don't have to keep messing with it. Once it, a little bit of gink maybe on the, or floating on the, on this body part, or you know, the over, over the body part, and uh, it will f fish pretty much all day. And I bring that thread right back to the right back to the bead. And now we're just going to put a little deer hair wing, just like a elk hair caddis. Maybe make it just a touch short. So if we're tying small flies here, some nice fine deer hair will work quite nicely for you. And this wing can be pretty sparse. Again, we're just going for a, you know, silhouette. A little pinch technique. Couple wraps in front. Trim this just like you would your elk hair caddis. And for the tail, I just cut that about a shank length. And then I'll come back in here and just trim a few, just so it's not all squared off and even across. I'll just kind of make them several of those fibers just all a little bit different length. I just want to want to come back in here and just kind of really pull this out. So yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. It's relatively pretty simple fly. Um, yeah, it's called, again, the Yukon Caddis Merger. Um, the one thing that's really, it can be done in various colors. Do it in this olive here. Um, you can do it in a tan. Uh, you can do it in a, a gray um, in from 14s through 20s. Uh, obviously, as we move to different size hooks, we do need different size beads. Uh, the glass beads, and uh, commercially now, uh, from the fly tire standpoint, you can really find the smaller beads relatively pretty easy. So, um, the great thing that I found about this fly is you don't necessarily need to fish it just 
during caddis emergence type situation. Uh, lots of times, like if you have a fish that's rising mm, every two, three minutes or whatever, doesn't really seem to be on anything specifically, but just coming up every now and then or just even bulging, um, you know, five, ten minutes or something like that. Uh, you can fish it a lot like a beetle. Just, just fish it, put it over them. You can even impart a little bit of movement if you'd like, uh, but uh, you'll see it. it really produces quite well.